This is the Weekly Terry. We are talking about Star Trek Legacy, or I should say a potential Star Trek Legacy. Now listen, full disclosure here, um, I do not believe, we don't have any new information about uh, Star Trek Legacy. But I saw this article on Yahoo, and almost everything they say in this article, I pretty much am like, yes, everything is right. So I want to go through I this. Think- Everything they got from this article was from listening to us talk about Star Trek Legacy. I was about to, I was about to say that. <laughs> was that what you're going to yeah, say? I was going there when you I'm interrupted like, me, and you you said you well no you said you agreed with everything in the article, so I was just like going to throw right. So I was about to say because I think I've said it <laughs> <laughs> multiple times. He stole my image. Look and, at the image and, on and not only have we said okay, so and, and Eric, no, we love you, we love you, Eric. Diaz, no, no shade whatsoever to Eric Diaz. Okay, yeah, but, no shade because we are all on the same page here. But this is the image. I not, not only did we contact. say all these points over the last five weeks, we used that exact screenshot. <laughs> <laughs> and listen, I'm okay with people the taking exact what we say and one, with it. like the exact one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay with it, though. I'm okay with it because. You know, listen, we need the, the word to get out. That's like the most important thing is really we don't understand 100 percent the politics between um, Paramount. We don't understand necessarily what Alex Kurtzman's motivation is at this point when it comes to Star right. Trek Legacy. All we know is that the show's not over. And we it's good that we've gotten this gear rolling, like the machines right. in motion, the fan the fan excitement is moving. We needed that because like when the Orville season four, season three ended, it took a long time to get fan energy going with that season. Like people were like just trying to get through the season from the beginning. We've had the motor going and that's going to help us um, reach Paramount. I mean, listen, how many times has Star Trek legacy uh, at Paramount plus been trending on Twitter? Like right. constantly. So the word is getting there. Now we just have to figure out, because as of right now, there still is no Star Trek legacy. I know we are waiting right. for an announcement, um, but there's there's nothing yet. And there's no official word out. So hopefully, <laughs> there's a lot of conversations going on in the back end where studio people are going, do you see how many people are watching this show on Paramount Plus? Yeah, and by the way, that, that's not just like two, I mean, we are two Yahoos, but we're two Yahoos that actually like, talk to people that would know something before we do and we're not we're not seeing any traction we're not seeing any we're just seeing nothing but silence man just i think that's the scariest part it's like and even there really hasn't been anything come out from the studio from alex kurtzman even watching the ready room stuff you know you're not seeing the execs come out and talk about this yet i'm hoping they're just waiting for it to be over but then they're going to come out like you, like the, the the cast and crew is talking about it on other people's shows, but mm. like on the official stuff, like Will Wheaton isn't even talking about what's next for these characters. Normally, in other version and other seasons of T, uh, of uh, Star Trek, in other ready rooms, he would talk about like what's next for these characters and wanting to continue. But like he's not none of that's none of that's coming up. It seems so dry and so like finite. Well, the only thing I can say is, to be fair, we don't know what's going to happen to which character over the next two episodes. It's really hard to say what can happen. I mean, listen, the entire ship could blow up. You know, we could lose everybody. We could, you know, <clears throat> if it, you know, not that I would would ever, you know, run to his aid. Um, but I understand why we're not speculating on the future of certain characters, because we really don't know what happens to any of them yet. And so that's why that's I'm trying fair. to. I'm trying to hold off on any sort of fear that we're not going to get a Star Trek legacy until after the season finishes. They get the full numbers on Paramount Plus to see how strong it finishes, to see whether or not there's a reason to move forward with this. Um, right. And then we also have to explore the mind of Alex Kurtzman and, you know, where does he sit personally with this and his plans for Star Trek? And can it be changed or adjusted um, based on what he already has going forward? You know, how much does he want Terry Mattalis to do more Star Trek? So there's there's a whole bunch of things that have to happen here. And um, all I would say is let's wait till the end to see what happens. Continue to be loud. Sign the petition. Um, you know, continue putting the word out. Another thing I wish this article, I mean, it appears that a lot of information came from us. So I wish he would he would have put the, 
the damn petition link in here, but I get it. Um, basically, what, what Eric Diaz says here in the beginning of the article is that he's been a life lifelong uh, trekker and that Picard Season 3 is an incredible tribute to, you know, the next generation. He goes on to quote uh, Terry Metalis here, and he goes, mm. uh, in the Inglorious Trekspert GalaxyCon panel, he said, this is what Terry Metalis says, look, I love this time period in Star Trek, the 25th century. I always view it as present day in Star Trek for me. It's where we all left off. And the way we leave this season is a passing of the torch from the last generation to the next. I would certainly love Star Trek Legacy to happen, we certainly leave it so that you can do that. So, you know, that's a little bit of a, a spoiler there. You know, he definitely leaves it so that there could be a start, there could be a continuation of the story, which is awesome. Yeah, and he and, and he does it in a beautiful in a beautiful way without oh. giving anything away. It's it's done, it's handled gorgeous. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. God, I can't wait for you guys to see that. That's gonna be great to talk about. Um, so he goes on to say, why do flan fans clamor for this era of Trek so much? Well, it's because the 90s is where Star Trek ruled. Despite first airing in the 60s, Star Trek wasn't a cultural dominant franchise until the 90s. I would say 80s, but whatever. The original series was a cult show, albeit with quite a large and vocal following. The feature films of the 80s were successful, but nowhere near as popular as Star Wars and other Spielberg era blockbusters. And TNG was a ratings hit uh, uh, right out of the gate in 1987, but struggled with the fans. Um, so I would say he's partially right here. I think that the the age of fans is lining up more with TNG probably than with TOS. Maybe that's why. Maybe that's why he's saying that. I bet you this guy is probably around my age. And he probably grew well, up watching TNG, wrong. right? I mean, it, on TV, I think is what he's talking about, is Star Trek was definitely more of a powerhouse in the late 80s through the 90s right. than it was in the 60s. You know, the Star Trek movies came back. <clears throat> I mean, frankly speaking, without the Star Trek movies coming back, there is none of this. There's no TNG. There is right. no, there's no second Star, there's no TNG yeah. without Star Trek The Motion Without Wrath of Khan. Khan. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, but what he's saying makes sense. You know, a lot of the fans that are around now, I mean, look, there's TOS fans. We love, you know, I'm, I'm a huge TOS fan, but he's right. Most of the people right around, I would say your age, um, who were, were kids, even my age, who were kids when TNG came out, this is where you fell in love with it. And, um, <clears throat> Terry just taps into that whole TNG Voyager and DS9 thing, just really dips into it perfectly here and. And there, there shows that there's a craving for more of that. I mean, that's what we were missing. Even when Enterprise came out, everybody's like, whoa, let's keep going. What happens after Voyager? Right. You know? Yeah. And <clears throat> he goes on in the article to talk about Star Trek prequel fatigue. And I got to say, True. thank you for saying it. Uh, you, if you've watched our show for seven years, you know I hate prequels. Hate them. I'm not, there's a place for them. Some people like them. That's great. It's fine. For me, I hate. When a sequel is actually a prequel, stop going backwards. And Star Trek, for the longest time, went backwards. And to make it worse, they went backwards, and it wasn't very good. Finally, we're going forward, and it's good. So my thing is this: he's completely on on. He's completely right right now. I hope, I pray, that we get a Terry Metalis series in the 25th century. But if that doesn't happen, and there is new Star Trek, just please, please go forward in the story. To like at the at the at the absolute very least, you need to go forward. We need to stop going backwards in time. I know it's I was like, well, why don't we explore this time period? I don't want to explore any time periods. I want to go forward. I don't want to explore what happened with this person and this time or these lost three years that Khan spent on. I don't care. Maybe you do, that's fine. But for me, please go forward. Stop exploring parts of the canon that books and comic books and extended canon has already covered exhaustively. Well, I mean, as, least as, as long as there's at least one show going forward. I don't care if we have other things that explore other things. I mean, that's actually kind of, you know, building the universe is, is, is always the goal in my mind. Sure. So to get a con series you know, or a con mini series or whatever is good, but, but there does need to be a series that always continues to move 
the time frame forward. Not yet. Yeah, yes. Do whatever you want. Yeah. Just don't do it at the expense of moving the story forward. Like, because I feel like that's cowardice. Like, uh, we don't want to keep going forward because going forward means we have to write new things. <laughs> that's true. There's that is we can go back. Yeah. We can go back mm. and just deal with characters everyone already likes. Why haven't well, it? Make- does that well? Does then does that make Discovery brave then by going into the future where they had to write new things? No, uh, they went. They went so far. They went so far into the future that it doesn't matter what they write. Mm. That okay. wasn't brave. That dude, that one. That's like the definition of of giving up. That's like like what well, they want to go forward, but we don't want to actually move the story forward. Let's give them what they want and go forward. But so far mm. that it doesn't. We don't actually have to write anything compelling. Mm. No, offense. or anything that connects to. The oh yeah, other. anything that connects. We don't mm, have to get right. any of the criticism. We're gonna go so far forward that none of the criticism of messing with canon will be. You know, what will we'll be a factor. Us. Right. Right. So we can have detached nacelles and just wild nonsense like the burn. Like, I, I, I almost understand that. Like, you want to write your own science fiction and you're in this universe with, you know, decades and decades and decades of canon. And you're getting roasted by fans for doing silly stuff that shouldn't have, have, have had be happening in your time period. I almost understand you want to continue writing your story, so mm-hmm. you need to move your story, your ship, your vehicle, so far in one direction or the other so you can do whatever you want. Right. Or, or what Star Wars did in a galaxy far, far away. You know? Like, we're going to go to a galaxy far, far away so, so that nothing has to connect. We don't have to mention Earth. Well, that was, that, that was better than the alternative, which was staying in the timeline. Right. We're not saying that even that is necessarily a good thing. Let's go on with what Terry said here. So... When he was talking about uh, whether or not legacy should happen or what would happen, he says, boy, wouldn't you want to check in with the Klingon Empire? Wouldn't you want to check in with Deep Space Nine and the Doctor from Voyager and everything that went on in the Berman verse? So that's kind of where I see it. To explore the galaxy and sort of get back to the next gen roots of storytelling is what I would see as a kind of version of Star Trek that I'd like to see with this group of characters that we're seeing. I don't want to talk too much about them. Although I think you could guess who I would like to see. Yeah. So, of course, you know, we can't really say either because we know what's coming. But what we can tell you is that which of these characters do you not like? You know, which ones do you love? And who could you imagine going forward in the universe? Right. And you know what? That's a great statement. And um, so we know Terry wants to do that, which is another reason. Another another reason why we need Terry doing this. Um, Like I said before, the very least is moving the story forward. But like. Terry has clearly uh, presented himself as the guy who understands what fans are looking for and what needs to happen with his franchise. Like he needs to be the Kevin Feige or whatever of this of the Star Trek universe. And I don't know what Kevin Feige makes, but oh my god, you could save some money and just stop hiring like fifteen directors and producers and just hire just hire Terry and just let let Terry and his team continue the story. And if you want to have different people. Doing Starfleet Academy or Khan or whatever, then go for it. But like for yeah. for the lifelong 60-year-old fans of this franchise, there needs to be something going forward. I understand you're trying to capture new fans. You want to capture the, the 19-year-olds and all that. That's fine. You know, you have that. But you need and you can have that, but you also need something for the legacy fans, no pun intended. Like you gotta have that, like or uh, legacy fans will support anything Star Trek as long as you're 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 not ignoring them. And um, for the mm. first time in a long time with season three, I I don't feel ignored. I feel like right we're, we're finally getting Star Trek that that that. And I know I know I know there's people that love both or love all love or love the old and new stuff. That's completely fine. We, I think he's established that you can like the new stuff and still like Picard season three. You can hate the new stuff and still like Picard season three, which means Picard season three is an all out win all around. Right. And the, the fear is, and here's the, pro, here's, here's the big fear is Terry's done such a good job that we don't know, you know, we don't know how Alex is responding to how, what a great job he's done. Like is, is him doing Trek so well when there's been so much criticism of, of new Trek so far by certain fans 
does that in some way, you know, make Alex feel threatened? Um, you know, so we hope that's not the case. What we what we like to say is, look, you know, if Alex is going to be in charge of Star Trek, um, we need to make sure he knows that what Star Trek we want. Now, he he found Terry Metalis, him and Akiva. Right. And he, you brought him into this into this universe with you guys to make this stuff. Just keep him. Just keep going. Like you brought him in. He's made he's helped you guys make Star Trek better, which is there's nothing wrong with that. Star Trek should always continue to get better. You know, if 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 you, you come out with a first series and it wasn't as great or grand as it planned to be, there's no reason the next one can't be. Who wouldn't say that Strange New Worlds is a step up from from Discovery? It is. You know, most people believe, OK, the, the tone where they're going with it, it, it feels better. It's like they've learned a lesson. So right. why can't Star Trek Picard season three be another lesson learned to keep growing from it? And hopefully the way Alex and the studio is taking on board is like, wow, we found this gem of a showrunner who really understands the IP that is the foundation of your freaking streaming service. Right. Star Trek is paramount. Right. OK, not in Yellowstone, pun intended. Yeah. You know, not Survivor. Huh, right. right. And Yellowstone, huge. Hey, Taylor, killing it, Taylor, killing it. Yeah. Listen. Uh, not, nothing wrong with those things, but like the cornerstone, like the foundation. Right. What like. Yes. Yeah. What holds it up? So hire the people, you know, go back out there and get Manny Cotto. Why not bring him in? Why you not know, have Terry in here? Let you know, even if Alex is going to continue in his role have Terry as an assistant to help him guide the other shows as well. Maybe even like, Hey, here's some input on this. Well, why would this right. work? Why wouldn't this work? You know, okay. You want to go for like the younger generation, you know, live action show. You want to go to Starfleet Academy. Okay, cool. We'll try to avoid doing this maybe and do more of this, you know, that'll make Star Trek fans go, Oh wow. You know, do like you did with, with prodigy where like, like you get the heart and soul of Star Trek, but it's like targeted to, towards children. Right. You know, you can do that for teens. You know, there's no reason. So right. it, it can totally be successful. They just need to recognize. Because let me tell you what. As soon as somebody figures it out, you go back and look at what this guy has done. This is the Weekly Terry. Go back and look at all the other stuff he's made and tell me it's not good. He's going to go do something else that's also going to be really good. Right. And we really want that to be Star Trek and not so, – what else? What else could he go do that would be, you know, good? He can do anything. So yeah, so, something something at Disney, I'm assuming. Right, you know, he's he's or doing Netflix. the he's done the 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 um pilot for Return to Witch Mountain. That's right. That's right. Witch Mountain, right. You know, but he could get scooped up and taken somewhere else and it would just be a shame because what we've gotten is beautiful this season. So. Right. It would be. I agree with that. Let us know what you guys think in the comment section down below and on the way there hit that subscribe button.